Papnol's log, January 1st, 1930. Here we go again. I cannot quite recall what has led to this conflict with the British. It isn't my place to question why we're fighting them. It is my place to force them to their knees. My doctrine is as follows. Build a Schwerpunkt of Schlagschiffen. I've envisioned a core of four battleships. These battleships are my primary weapon against their battleships and their battle cruisers. Our Schlachtkreuzers, or battle cruisers, will be focused on speed, outrun battleships and outfight their heavy and light cruisers. The Schwere Kreuzers, or heavy cruisers, will be the key strength of our navy. With a mix of guns and torpedoes, they will fear no encounter. In sufficient numbers, they will be able to take down even the largest of ships. Depending on the British ships, we'll consider having light cruisers. They could make for an excellent convoy raider, and as a defense against destroyers. Ideally, they will be cheap and numerous. The fight ahead of us is a difficult one, but like in football, it's a fun little game, and in the end, the Germans always win. Now, the Reichsmarine is demanding my attention. Let's get to work. Hey guys, still here. Let me begin with wishing you a happy new year. It's 2022. Um, if 2021 is anything to go by, this year is going to be interesting. But let's hope it'll be a better one than last. Now, a new campaign. Germany, 1930s. We're going to go for it, and we're going to go in hard. The hard difficulty is usually a lot more interesting than the normal difficulty. I'm going to let the AI be a random opponent, so they're going to have their own historical, or their, sorry, their non-historical ships, and I'm going to create my own fleet. In case you're wondering how I got to 1930, if you have just started up your game and you want to do the 1931, um, I'm sorry, I have some bad news, because you're going to have to go through 1890, 1900, 1910, and 1920 first. Perhaps, in a few months, this is going to be changed. I don't know. Uh, I would hope so, because playing through all these campaigns sometimes is a bit of a grind. But here we are in 1930. Let's begin. Here we are. We have a whopping 629 million available. My current monthly balance is plus 45 million, but that's of course with not having any kind of ships. Nothing has been built, nothing has been uh, put either in sea control or in being, so we got a ton of money. The British, let's see what they have. Three heavies, so three battleships, two battle cruisers, six heavy cruisers, that's a pretty low amount. 13 light cruisers and 17 destroyers for a mere 41 ships. But keep in mind, ships in this era have gotten a lot more expensive. So, potentially, the British have gone for a more expensive, high-tech fleet, as opposed to a more numerous one. Let's get to designing, which will be the key feature of this particular episode. Um, I can already... Wow! I can, <laughs> I can go for the super battleship too. Um, I would need a bit of an upgrade to my shipyards, because these behemoths start at 104,000 tons. Of course, it would be fantastic to build one of these. But um, let's just go to the shipyard, to the finances. Yeah, I can... <laughs> my shipyard currently can do 49,400 tons. If I want to upgrade that by another 6,000 tons, I'm underway for 24 months, so that's two years. Um, let's say I can do 3,000 tons every year. Um, I don't think upgrading my shipyards is that much of a priority right now. I probably won't be able to get to the Super Battleship 2. The Battleship 1 at 52,000 tons? Maybe. That's the Modern Battleship 2. The Modern Battleship 1? Uh, I still have room to upgrade that, because the maximum size of this one is 45,500 tons. Oh, sorry, 54,500. Now, as I said, this battleship is going to be the key to fighting other battleships. Which means I'm going to go for longer range accuracy. And that's why I picked Modern Tower 2, plus 30 long-range accuracy. Secondary Tower, plus 12 long-range accuracy, plus 11.5, plus 4, or plus 2. This one, please. When it comes to firepower, what do we have available? We have access to quad turrets. There is generally a lot of discussion about whether quad turrets are worth it, because they are less accurate, the rate of fire is lower, but they put out more shells. So you're basically relying upon brute force. Unfortunately, the 18-inch guns are only Mark I, which means they get all sorts of uh, detractors. They are slower to reload, they are less accurate. I'm not picking those. 
the 17 inches are mark two here 15 inch mark three let's see if we can build something akin to the battleship uh, bismarck slash turpets depending on which one you prefer they were sister ships after all let's put some medium superimposed barbettes there and go for 15 inch dual barrel why not triples um well i just like the look of the dual barrel sure the triples might be more efficient but i just like the look of these and dual barrel over triple barrel does give you a bit of an accuracy advantage okay that's my firepower but there is a lot that needs to be upgraded about this particular ship look at that price hike here 42.9 million we're going to go to Crypt 4, which of course gives me a lot more armor strength. This is plus 70%. This is plus 100%, but you're also getting a uh, detractor to your armor weight of minus 25 to minus 40. But the price goes up by about 7 million. There you go. It does give me some very valuable room to upgrade the ship further. I think gear turbines are, for this ship, enough. Because they're going to make it ex ex pretty expensive as is. If I go for this, we're looking at a 65 million battleship, and despite having quite a large amount of funds, I'd rather not spend all of them. At least not on battleships. Now, I can get the Auxiliary 4 engine, Electric Batteries 2, which gives me another 6 million on this ship. It does give you quite a large amount of bonuses. Turret traverse speed, plus 8%. Ship repairs, 52% on engines and 42.5% on ship repairs for all modules. Considering that this thing is going to get hit, I want to fix that ship repair, or I want to fix the ship as quickly as possible. Let's see if induced boilers would be sufficient if I put on a couple of funnels. I have 790 ton funnels. Uh, they are... You know, we're going to go for two. The reason being... If one gets destroyed or knocked out, I still have the other one. So it's a bit of a redundancy. Then, barbette armor. Yes, please. All of it. Anti-torp. All of it. Well, not all of it, because this makes the ship pretty heavy. And ideally, I would fight at range, which means I don't really have to worry that much about the enemy destroyers. Anti-flood. All of it. Bulkheads. Maximum. Citadel. All or nothing armor scheme. Citadel 5. <clears throat> we're already at 46,000 tons. Standard bulkheads. No, we're going to go for reinforced bulkheads too. Flash fire spreading chance needs to be reduced as much as possible. When it comes to radar, I will gladly take that. Because that's an even bigger bonus to long range accuracy. Uh, acoustics. Something light. Because I would like some additional torpedo spotting, but not that much. And we're going to go for Sterius Copic Rangefinder 5, plus 30% long-range accuracy. These ships are costing me 93 million each, and I'm not done upgrading. I want RDF. Supposedly, RDF, or Radio Direction Finding, allows you to find the source of radio transmissions, including convoys, which would be lovely. Um, this ship, however, is not really a commerce raider, so I'm just going to push it down to an advanced radio. When it comes to uh, this, I'm going to put that to oil. That'll make the ship slightly more expensive, but at the same time, it means that I have a little bit less displacement there. I'm going to put the ship to 27 knots, and potentially a bit less than that. Because at the moment, yes, I have quite a bit of firepower, but I still need to upgrade that firepower. If I want auto loaders, that means I can reload these guns in about 40 seconds, and that's not counting veterancy. If I put them on standard, the reload sits at 65 seconds, so that upgrade is well worth it. Advanced hydraulic turrets, and as far as the type of shell that we're firing, 20% shell damage, yes please. I would like super heavy shells to deal as much damage as possible. Although this will come at some expense to long range accuracy. But it's only a minus 4.5%, we have a lot of bonuses, so we should be fine. And keep in mind, I'm trying to get this ship to do damage at the best range possible, at the longest range that I can. Considering that it is mostly a sniper, I'm going to reduce main armor belt. I'm going to have this at 11. Uh, the main deck is more important here. 
So let's say eight inches, aft belt, five inches, four belt, five inches. Um, the turrets, 18 and a half. I'm probably gonna have to reduce anti-torpedo blister, otherwise I'll never get the amount of displacement that I need. Let's set this to standard, 17,000 kilometers. Well, that's not standard, that's medium. And what else would I need? Oh, you know what? I could... Yeah, I'm gonna come back on my initial statement of going with two funnels, because these are 790 tons. And I already have, with natural boilers, a pretty good engine efficiency. Turbines would give me even more displacement, but it's four, it's, or sorry, it's 104 million for one of these ships. They are crazy expensive, and I would like three or four of them. Probably three, <laughs> based on what I am trying to build here. I think three is more reasonable. Um, against destroyers, I would like some additional turrets. I'm thinking five inchers. Although that's only 10 kilometer range. Six inches is 12.7. It's 117 tons per. Something like this at least gives me some additional firepower to deal with the destroyers. And hopefully will mean that I'm capable of killing those before they get too close. And of course, the 15 inch guns here should also be able to pack quite the punch. Now, I want to bring this as close in as possible. Because the closer I am to the core of the belt, the less likely I am to experience flash fires. And what I mean is that if I have my turret sitting all the way over here, for example, uh, I think that the mid belt, so the main belt, is pretty much from here or maybe here to here. So this turret is only protected by a 5-inch 4 belt, meaning explosive hazard. That's why I'm pulling these turrets as close to the superstructure as possible. It also means that you don't have as much pitch. The more pitch you have, the less base accuracy you have. Yes, you'll decelerate faster, but that's not really what I'm going for. Sadly, I'm still at a 3.9% aft weight offset. Um... <clears throat> what am I to do with that? I can push this out slightly. Is there room for a tall barbette? It's 255 tons of barbette, that is. That ought to be sufficient. Uh, I can put this then up here. No. Up here. There you go. Remove that. Four weight offset, one three now. Pull this thing slightly back in, one one. Wow, that's interesting. Um, this thing is not attached to the barbette. Look at this. It shifts the barbette, but it forgets about the gun. <laughs> okay. Fine. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have to go. I think that is the best option, sadly. I don't like that weight offset. What if I shift this? 3.8? Good grief. It's a bit much. Um, how about shifting these back? Four, six, two, nine, still? Two point, what the hell? <laughs> Jesus. 2.1? Is that all because of this boy? Yeah, pretty much. Um, how do I balance this thing out? A bit further forward. There. Bit further back. Bit further back. We're looking at 0 0.8 aft. I push these to here. 2.44. Let's remove those entirely. Uh, 
No, I need to put these further back. 4-3. Oh, come on. Do sit. Aft 2.2. Here, now we can balance them out. Nope, still need more. After a little bit of tweaking, this is the battleship I've come up with. This is the Hildebrand class, but I'm going to reveal the class that as Bismarck. The Bismarck class, standard quarters, maximum bulkheads, 16,141 kilometer range, 28 knots. I upgraded it slightly. She has one funnel. She has her four double 15 inch barrels. A couple of 6-inch as secondaries. It is a very light secondary armament, but this thing is not designed to fight up close at all. To that end, it has a modest anti-torpedo blister, pretty decent double bottom, as well as anti-flood 3, in case that she does get penned by enemy battleships. She's firing super heavy TNT shell type 4, radar 1, as well as a stereoscopic rangefinder makes sure that the ship can do long-range accuracy very well. 11 inch main belt, 5 inch fore belt, 8.5 inches of deck armor, 4.2 inches of fore deck, 4 inches of aft deck, 18.5 inches of side armor on the turrets, so that's basically the turret armor all around, except for the top, which is only 7.5. First class complete. On to the next. Oh, I could have just clicked that plus. Uh, the next is the battle cruiser, and I can go for the battle cruiser 2 or the heavy cruiser. Um, we also got the Advanced Armored Cruiser too. Jeez, this is a long boy. Let's see, which has the better hull form? The Heavy Cruiser 2 has a way better hull form than the Battle Cruiser 2. 70. The reason why I'm looking at that is um, if you have a better hull form, you basically take less energy in order to get a fast ship. And since the Battle Cruisers are supposed to be fast, that is why I'm looking into that stat. Okay, these guys, as mentioned, are designed to outshoot what they cannot outrun. So, they're going to have a pretty heavy armament. I'm thinking... Oh, crap, they're considered cruisers. Oh, crap, no. No, 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 I need the battle cruiser, because the battle cruisers can have bigger guns. Shit. I was hoping to use that hull, but I'm going to have to use it for a different class. Um, Long-range accuracy is not as important for this particular hull, because I'm hunting down cruisers, and I'm running away from battleships, basically. So, um, in order to run away from a battleship, I'm probably going to need 33 knot speed. I'm going to use very powerful engines. We're going to go with potentially induced boilers, heavy armor, uh, some anti-torpedo blister would be required, radar... Definitely high-end sonar, because I'm dealing with cruisers, which are likely to have torpedoes. A rear tower, which has a uh, high-end aiming speed, as well as good base accuracy, to make targeting those cruisers easier. Let's toss in a funnel. Is that enough? Not nearly. Toll funnel 2, 35, 97. That's better. Okay, turrets. Uh, standard crew quarters, please. As well as oil. Turrets. I'm hunting down cruisers. <clears throat> I'm thinking to hunt down cruisers. 13-inch guns ought to be sufficient. And we're going to go with an ABX format. So three triples. I will have one there. One there. And on a medium superimposed barbette, another one like that. I might have to go with this instead. Sit. Back. There, 5-2. If I could put the turret here, that would definitely keep me inside the main armor belt. Or at least that's my thinking. Um, sadly, it might not exactly fit. Because I have an 8.44 weight offset. <coughs> that's problematic. I need to fix that. Um, auxiliary engine... What else? Enhanced reloading, advanced hydraulic turrets. Secondary, 8-inch guns. There. 
That way I immediately displace quite a bit of that offset. I wonder, could I build another turret up here? Like so. And then put that there. Or would that make the ship too top heavy? 14.9 pitch. 14.5 pitch. It's not that bad. Roll. 0.7. That doesn't change. It's only the pitch that changes slightly. But having this amount of firepower to deal with cruisers would be very nice. And then we can potentially add another one there. Yep. So this thing is definitely geared towards defeating cruisers. It'll not do very well when facing destroyers, probably, because these hulls are pretty terrible at turning away. Turning circle, almost a kilometer. So, at top speed, I'm going to run into trouble. Set this to about half. That ought to be enough. Pull you in a little bit more. Armor status. Let's say I'm facing a cruiser which has 11-inch guns. Those 11-inch guns are going to be capable of penning my ship and operating at 10 kilometer range. Uh, 18 inches. 18 inches. I have a plus 110, so I'm going to need a bit more four armor belts. Because I'm probably going to be facing the target bow in. This is more of a secondary armament to deal with ships that happen to be on my stern. Let's make sure these things don't get blown off the ship. Uh, superstructure armor is probably going to be a bit more important. Deck armor, not quite sure. Bit less, I hope. Aft belt needs armor. Six inches, yes, there we go. So that's 12 inches of armor. That means that it can get penned at closer ranges. But if angled, it's going to make it very difficult for them to pen. Let's go with 13. No, we cannot do 13. Okay, fine. Five inch top armor. I have five tons left. And I still need to find a way to balance this ship out. Um, can we push this secondary tower back slightly in the main? There. 0.5. Point 0.5, point 0.9, point 0.5. Perfectly balanced. I think, however, that that turret won't turn properly. That's better. There. Okay, ship ready. She's going to fire standard shells, which in case of her 13-inch armament should be sufficient. She's not going to have radar, uh, sorry, radio. She's not required to have that. She's probably operating alone as a hunter. That's my plan with this ship. König Wilhelm, ready. Now let's first order up a couple of these ships. I'm going to go with three battleships of the Bismarck class. That's about half my budget. <coughs> I want... Um, I think three battle cruisers. How many did they have? Two. Okay, fine. We're gonna go with two battle cruisers as well. Budget left, 200 million. Okay, the core of the fleet, the heavy cruiser. I can have the heavy cruiser two, advanced heavy cruiser, sorry, advanced armored cruiser two, or advanced armored cruiser one, or heavy cruiser one. I got a lot of options. The Heavy Cruiser 1 has a fantastic hull form. Which means a lot of, um, well, a lot of energy can be used to, or rather, <coughs> allow me to rephrase, um, a very efficient way of displacing the ship. Heavy Cruiser 2, resistance 85, 101. That's very nice. I'm also looking for stability, but I am expecting these ships to be quite close in. Hmm, this might be the better option. And then just going with the minimum displacement. Because I want to have quite a few of these. 17.5 base accuracy plus 35 long range accuracy. Good lord. 
Uh, yeah, there's a bit of a problem. It might not fit on the ship. There we go. It does fit, but barely. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna have to make these things quite heavily upgraded. Otherwise, I'll not be able to fit anything on this ship. Engine efficiency, 31.8. There you go. Sadly, I might not have room to plant some torpedoes on this ship. Um, how am I going to do that? If I See, there are already 30 million. <coughs> which means I can only afford six. And that's without guns. And without radar and all sorts of other gadgets and gizmos. Um, I'm going to slow them down. 28 knots. Still makes them 20 million. <laughs> 17 million. 15 million. Guns. I'm thinking solid 10 inches, which are Mark IV. ABX. Nope. Doesn't fit. Okay, fine. Max it out. Oh, you can only do 20,000 tons. Okay, fine. There. Push this back. We're gonna have a few heavy cruisers this match. Or this campaign. Fine. Be like that. Still 14.6? Wow. Okay. Unexpected. This thing is getting a bit annoying. 5-1. <clears throat> That's more like it. Okay, since these things are going to be capable of tackling basically anything and everything, that means that they're going to require an armament of torpedoes, decent protection, not stellar, decent protection, and when it comes to torpedo launchers, I'm thinking four here. So we can engage basically anything and everything. And these are going to be... Electric. Minus 87.5% torpedo protection. Oh, sorry, torpedo detection. 21 inch. And I... Yeah, I might be able to fit them there. But they probably won't rotate very well. Sadly, with that turret over there, I can't fit them. Hmm. What if I put them here, further up front? Nice forward-facing torpedo armament. And then a, a bunch of secondaries, because these might very well engage convoys. Five inch there, five inch there. No, actually. Just a whole slew of four inch. What can I fit on there? Three inch. Fine. Still 12.9 weight offset, four. <clears throat> How am I going to balance that out? Winston's 5 rangefinder. Yes, acoustics. Walks 1. Shaft 1. Turning circle. 664. Jeesh. Now, this is an exceptionally heavy amount of firepower for a heavy cruiser. It's 12 10 inches. I might have to downgrade that to 9. Because it's quite a bit lighter. It's 510 versus 648. Which would give me potentially a bit more balance on this ship. A bit better way to deal with the offsets, hopefully. There. How am I going to fit that? Okay, we're going to squeeze these torpedo launchers in here. 4, 3.6. 3. 0 3.3. 3. We'll get there. Bingo. That's it. Okay. Secondary armament, set. Oh, crap. Um, <clears throat> here. One five aft. One 
one. Zero point three. I can live with zero point three. It's not too bad. Reloads enhanced. Bringing these reloads to 28.6 seconds. Pretty good. Considering that these guys also have to deal with smaller ships, I'm not going to armor them that much. I'm going to make sure that they get better steering and better uh, dodging capabilities. 566 turning circle. 518. Electrohydraulic steering. 422. Uh, I don't really like dismembering this armament or armor. Twenty inch torpedoes means it's Yeah, this is plus two hundred percent torpedo damage. This is plus three hundred and thirty. <clears throat> I need that. So we're gonna have to upgrade the engines instead. And win some displacement back there. Give me RDF so we can intercept convoys. Good lord, these things are 40 million a pop. Jesus. That is one big boy. Give me an unbalanced rudder. 298 turning circle. Now we're getting somewhere. And then sonar 3. So I have the best possible warning for torpedoes. If I slow from my 28 knot speed down to something more reasonable, when I encounter destroyers or something armed with a torpedo launcher, I should be fine. Heavy shells. Um, TNT-4, it's just the best firepower. 22 inch torpedoes. Dealing these 1,352 damage if they hit. Oh, we can not quite carry an increased complement. Although, I kind of doubt that that's going to be too useful, because these reload in 1,275 seconds, which is about 20 minutes. <clears throat> that's pretty bad. Three to 13... What? Electro-hydraulic steering gear? Oh, this causes flash fires and a few other issues. If you go for electrohydraulics, it increases your turning circle, but it takes away quite a lot of those uh, negative modifiers. That's the issue. Okay, what are we going to armor up? Superstructure. By a whole one or point one inch. Conning tower. There, exactly 20,000 tons. And this is the Nisenau class. I'll accept. <clears throat> They're extremely expensive. 37 million for a heavy cruiser. Compare that to the 45 million from a battle cruiser. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's the entire budget blown. Okay, where are we going to set these? I want the Bismarck and the Thuringen over in Wilhelmshaven. So, you and you. Select port, Wilhelmshaven. We're going to put you out to sea control and engage the enemy. How many ships do I have? I'm building 10. <laughs> That's a quarter of their fleet strength. Oh, this is great. Uh, the Thuringen. Oh, sorry, this is the third battleship. Um, we're going to have the Thuringen operating out of Kiel. So they're also going to be capable of defending the, let's say, the right flank. Kiel. Sea control. Hindenburg and König Wilhelm are hunters. I'm going to put them out of Hamburg. Sea control. I want the Nisenau over in Palau. It's the only cruiser which is going to be there. Admiral Scheer and Fürst Bismarck out in Hamburg. Sea controlling. And let's see, what do I have where? I could have one more heavy cruiser, like the Turinja, set out of Palau, but just in being. So they're going to be defending the port and something close to it. And then the Rhineland, heavy cruiser. Hamburg, Hamburg, Palau, Palau. Q. 
kill I don't know Bremen <clears throat> I don't have a ship in Bremen I'm not sure if it's required there so that's the fleet start the campaign of course I'm immediately down 4.8 million that's how bad this is going to be um I'm spending 17.8 million on tech. That's quite a lot. Of course, this means that my research is going to be extremely slow again. But overall, I don't value research that much. At least, not really in the campaign. So I'm going to not have that much. I would, in fact, like to increase my transport budget to 0.5% over. And a little bit more crew training. 50%, that should be acceptable. All right, as always, I have a setup episode of the campaign and this was it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are on the battleships, battle cruisers, and heavy cruisers down below in the comment section. And I shall see you guys soon for the next episode. See you then.